So, macOS Catalina. It's the brand new update of macOS from Apple that got announced at WWC this year. And the public beta is available. We've got it installed here. You can go out and download it if you want. You know, just be careful, it's beta software. But we have it here and there are a couple of really cool things about it, mostly Sidecar, which lets you use your iPad as a second screen for your Mac. Really cool feature. But the meat of the update, and this is what we're gonna talk about in this video, is this new round of iPad apps that have come to the Mac under the codename Project Catalyst. And while Apple is kind of positioning this as the future of the Mac, after I've spent some time with these apps, it really has me worried actually. So this entire project started in 2018 under the name Project Marzipan at the time. And basically Apple sold this as a way for developers to bring over their mobile apps to the iPad in a really easy way. It was a shared SDK that you know Apple was kind of giving over to developers. Now the first batch of these that we got coming from Apple was Apple News, Stocks, and Voice Memos. And you know, Apple was kind of starting off slow with these, not exactly the biggest name apps that they have. But what we found when we started actually using them is not really a good sign. They were buggy, they were inconsistent, and most of all, they didn't feel like Mac apps. And that's really not a good thing if Apple wants us to actually use these on our Macs. So fast forward to this year and to this year's WWDC, and we have Mac OS Catalina, which now has this new name to go with it, Project Catalyst for this whole operation. I don't know why they changed the name, Project Catalyst, you know, from Marzipan, maybe to match the name of the operating system, Catalyst, Catalina, Catalyst, I don't know. But anyways, we have a whole batch of new apps coming from Apple, and this time around, it's Apple Music, Apple TV, and Apple Podcasts. Now this time around, it's a bit different. The stakes are a bit higher. I mean, these apps are replacing iTunes, the old standard bearer for native Mac applications, and giving us these three individual mobile apps to replace it. Now what's really interesting about these apps is they don't actually resemble the Project Marzipan apps from last year all that much. They have different title bars, certain UI elements, like the back button is in a different place, fonts are different. I mean, when you put these side by side, they almost feel like they're from completely different app ecosystems. And even stranger is that these apps don't actually resemble each other in some ways. And in particular, I'm talking about the Apple TV app. I mean, the idea of this application is pretty you know, cool, like being able to watch something on your Apple TV and then kind of pick up right where you left off on your MacBook or Mac but the delivery and the execution of this is so bad. I mean, it just feels really half-baked. I hate to say it, but they actually kind of remind me of using an Android app on a Chromebook or Chrome OS tablet. I know that's a really bad thing to say, but honestly, like these apps don't feel like they were made for this particular device. Okay, so check this out. This is the Apple TV app and you know, you can tell it basically looks exactly like how it would look if you were on an actual Apple TV. But I mean, is that really what you want in something that's supposed to feel like a native Mac app? I mean, it doesn't give you any information when you scroll over. And then if you actually click on something, um, you know, it gives you the nice, the nice graphic there, but you, there's no way of going back. There's no back button, the two finger, you know, swipe doesn't work. Apparently the delete key works. Um, I don't know why, but the only way to go back is to actually click on this top bar. It's almost like they expect you to have a TV remote and have a back button built into the remote. Weird, huh? Now I know what you're thinking, you know, isn't this beta software? Should we, we shouldn't judge, you know, Apple too hard for this. And like, you know, maybe, like I really hope that Apple does, you know, fix some of these issues before these apps launch later this year with the official launch of Catalina. But given the fact that they released those apps last year in Mojave and they were like, oh, not very good. And then also didn't update them to make them look like the other Catalina apps this year. It just doesn't leave me with a lot of confidence that Apple actually cares about this stuff. Now my main concern about all this isn't just that I wish Apple's first party apps were better and would be able to be ported over easier. It's really about these third party developers because if Apple can't figure this out, you know, the company that owns these SDKs and owns this entire platform, if they can't figure out a way to do this in a smooth way that's easy and actually produces apps that people wanna use, 
It doesn't leave me with a lot of hope that third-party developers are gonna be able to do that. Some of the other apps that Apple has announced that are gonna be coming through Project Catalyst this year are the game Asphalt 9 and the DC Comics app. And you know, these aren't available in the App Store yet, but they are coming later this year, so we'll have to wait and see how these actually look and feel. I mean, are these actually gonna feel like apps that were made for the Mac? Because if Apple can figure this out, if they can actually make this work in a real way, this could be a pretty big turning point for this entire platform as a whole. If not, this is all just gonna turn out to be another failed attempt at unifying the desktop world with the mobile world, and we've seen how bad that can get with both Microsoft and Google. Apple has the resources and the good sense to do this right, but so far from what we can tell, it's not gonna be as easy as they might have thought. Hey, thanks for checking out this video. Please let us know in the comments what you think of macOS Catalina. Have you installed it yet? And what do you think of these new apps? Do you miss iTunes? I, I know a lot of people who do. So let us know and make sure to subscribe for more videos from Digital Trends.